Hello and welcome. My name is Steve Park and I'm a member of the customer success team at TIBCO Jaspersoft. In this video, I'm going to explain my preferred approach for creating and working with custom code that extends the Jasper Report server code base. Um, I'm also going to explain how I set up my Eclipse environment uh, both to do development and to do debugging remotely uh, on a Tomcat server. Um, so to begin, what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to show you how I set up my project. Um, let me first explain that when I've uh, so during the time I've been at TIBCO Jaspersoft, I've seen several different approaches that people will take to do this. A fairly common approach is to download the source code and then uh, begin modifying it directly and bringing in the entire source code into your Eclipse workspace and then uh, try to either build the uh, source code using uh, the command line build matic tools or try to compile it directly in Eclipse and frankly take forever to do that. Um, I think a better approach to do this is to just create a custom project that just has just the source code that you would need. Um, so here's an example of that. Uh, it's a uh, class, it's a project that has three classes uh, in order to implement a custom SSO solution. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I configure this. Um, so um, a prerequisite for this is you do need to download the Jasper Report server source code. However, you do not necessarily need to compile that source code. Um, instead, what you can do is you can um, bring in the, um, the jar files and use those as dependencies. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a library. So I'm going to create a user library. I don't have any user libraries yet in my workspace, so I'm going to create a new one. And I'm going to call it Jasper Report Server 6.3.0. You can call it whatever you want, but um, I think a good descriptive name is helpful. So now the next thing I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go to where I've got my Jasper Report Server installed, which is uh, here on my file system. I'm using a Macintosh, by the way. And so I'm going to go to the LIB folder under Apache Tomcat, and I'm just going to grab all of the jar files. Or actually, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to go to this folder instead, not the LIB folder. I'm going to go to the web apps, Jasper Report Server, web INF, LIB folder, and I'm going to grab all of these jar files. These are all of the jar files that get shipped with Jasper Report Server. And I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to grab all of them. Okay, so another thing I need to do after I've created my library is um, I still have a couple of classes that use the uh, Java uh, X um, J, uh, JSP classes. And so what I need to do is I need to bring in those jars as well. So I'm going to do is this, I'm going to modify my build path and I'm going to add external archives. And now I go back to the other location that I was just at, the LIB folder here, and I'm going to grab the JSP API uh, .jar file as well as the servlet API .jar file. And I'm going to bring those in. Now you'll notice that my code compiles and all the red has gone away. Um, Okay, now let's suppose that uh, when I'm stepping through this code, I wind up stepping into code that is part of the Jasper Report Server source code distribution. Uh, what will happen is, let's say for instance, I want to look at this external user details service class. When I step in there, you'll notice that I don't have any source code there, so I need to attach the source. This is why you would need to download the source code. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go to where I've got the source code downloaded. I'm going to go to external folder, and I'm going to go here. So I've got the source code downloaded in this location on my hard drive. And so I go under here to uh, Jasper server. And what I need to do is I need to figure out the location of this jar file. So I'm going to come over here to uh, Jasper server. And I'm going to go under Jasper server API and external auth and then source and then main and then Java. And I believe this is where the source code is. So I click OK. And now I can see the, uh, the source code. Another thing you'll notice is that when I come in here to the libraries now, and I go to that uh, jar file that I was just looking at, the uh, Jasper Report Server API external os 630 snapshot, you'll notice now there's this little icon uh, next to uh, the jar. And this shows that I've got source code attached to it. I don't necessarily need to attach source code to every single jar file in here. But let's say I'm stepping through some code and I hit a spot that I don't have source code attached. This way, I could bring in the source code without necessarily needing to worry about uh, setting up the Jasper Report server source or compiling it.
So that's all I need in order to uh, get this to work. Um, so now what I can do is, is once I have my code developed, um, I could go ahead and I can start setting breakpoints in here. So I right click and I can say toggle a breakpoint and then when I connect to my remote Tomcat server, I can start stepping through the code when it hits this breakpoint. Now in order to configure the remote connection uh, to Jasper Report Server Tomcat, I need to do a couple of things. First of all, I need to go to uh, where my Jasper Report Server is configured, uh, and I need to do this on the command line since I'm in Mac. And so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to edit a file called uh, setenv.sh. And in this file, what I need to do is I need to add um, some options in order to configure JPDA. So the way I do that is I add the following. So I need to add a, um, a parameter called agent lib, and then I'm going to add a colon, and then uh, jdwp. And then I need to add some properties uh, in order to configure my JPDA connection. The first property is called transport, and I'm going to set that to dt underscore socket, and it always has to be this. The next one is called address. And that one, I'm assigning a port number that I'm going to use to connect to JPDA. And in this case, I'm going to use 8787. Um, you can use any port number you want as long as the port is open and not uh, being blocked by a firewall or used by a service. Then the next parameter is called server, which I was set to Y. And then the final parameter is called suspend, which I was set to N. And then after that, I'm going to add a Java ops. Uh, variable and then close this and then I save it and that's done. Now this is how you would do it on a Mac or on a Linux system. If I was going to do this on Windows I would have to do it differently especially if I am uh, using uh, the uh, bundled install. So in the bundled install what I would need to do is I would need to come into a folder called uh, uh, bin underneath uh, the Tomcat folder and there's a file here called Tomcat 8w. Now if I was uh, running the bundled installer of Jasper Reports server I would need to change this file to Jasper Reports Tomcat. Uh, because that's the name of the Windows service uh, that we use uh, when installing Jasper Report Server using the bundled Tomcat. Um, I'm actually not using the bundled Tomcat in this instance, so I'm going to keep the name as Tomcat 8W. And then I need to open this file as an administrator. And then I go to the Java tab, and then down here in the Java options, I can configure the agent live parameter, which I've done here. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is in Eclipse, I need to come in here and I need to uh, establish the connection from the client side. So what I do is I come over here to debug, I click on the arrow next to the, the uh, ant for the debug symbol, and I click on debug configurations. Now what I need to do is I need to create a remote Java connection, so I click that and then I click new, and then I'm going to set up my connection here. So um, I've got my custom code project, which is the project. Um, I'm going to use the standard socket attached connection type. Now in this case, I am running Jasper Report Server locally, but if I was going to run this remotely, I would have to change this to whatever the host name or IP address is. And then the last part is the port, which I've set as 8787. And then I click apply, and then I would click debug in order to launch the debugger. And then once I have uh, the debugger running, um, I could go to Jasper Report Server, and uh, when I hit my custom code, um, I would uh, hit the breakpoint, and then I can start stepping through uh, the debugger using Eclipse.